Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, maximum nesting depth of parentheses. We're given a string and basically a really, really long description here. Ain't nobody got time to read all of that. So I'm gonna quickly summarize it. They define something called a valid parentheses string, which is pretty much what you would expect. When you have parentheses, you would expect every open parentheses to be matched with a closing parentheses. Now we could technically also just have like an empty string or we could have a string with a single character. So they say these empty strings or just a single character are valid. They don't explicitly tell you this here, but if we had multiple characters, A, B, C, we intuitively know that this is valid. Now, the way they told us that this is also valid is with a kind of an overcomplicated definition, but I guess this is very mathematical in nature. What they said is any valid strings concatenated with each other are also valid. So when you think about it, each of these is an individual valid string. So if you add them all together, they are also valid. If you take any valid string like this and wrap it in parentheses, it is also now valid. Now, what we want to do is calculate the depth of this valid parentheses string. We don't have to worry about validating it. It's not like the problem leak code 20, valid parentheses. It's actually much more simple than that because first of all, we're only dealing with this type of parentheses. We don't have brackets. We don't have curly braces. This is gonna be very simple for us. Now, in terms of what the depth is, again, it's pretty much what you would expect. So if we have like a string like this with just one open and one closing parentheses, it has a depth of one. If you have a string like this where open and close, open and close, this also has a depth of one. You can think about how nested is the parentheses. Now, if we were to move these such that it's kind of double nested, this has a depth of two. So just by kind of what I showed you right now, you might have recognized the pattern. You might have recognized what the solution to this problem is. Basically, how many consecutive open parentheses do we have before they are closed? Like if we go through this string from left to right, we see open parentheses. Okay, that's a one. Okay, two open parentheses. We have now two open parentheses that haven't been closed. Now we might see some contents in between here. We might have seen some contents over here or here. It really doesn't matter. Ignore every character that is not an open parenthesis or is not a closing parenthesis. At this point, we see that, okay, this is a closing one, so we had two, now we decrement that by one. Now we see another one, and it's a closing parenthesis, decrement that by one, and we should always end up with zero because we're pretty much told that this is always gonna be valid, so again, we're not worried about validating this, we are just worried about as we scan from left to right, we wanna know what was the maximum number of open parentheses that we were able to find before they ended up being closed. Quickly looking at this first example, I've just gone ahead and blown it up, but it's kind of meant to confuse you just like all of this. It's more simple than it seems. We see open parentheses here. Okay, our count is one. We see some characters, we ignore them. Who cares what they are? We already assume everything here is technically valid. Uh, first of all, this is valid. So then we see another open parentheses, okay. Now our count is at two. We see some characters, closing parentheses. So count goes down to one. And then we see an open parentheses and then another open parentheses. So then our count goes up to three. Basically, that means that at this point, the depth of the nesting is three. And that makes sense because these two parentheses kind of negate each other. So we had one, we're in one layer of nesting. Then we see two open parentheses. So this is three layers in. And then of course it gets closed by this one. So then our count goes down to two, closed again, down to one, closed again, down to zero. But the maximum among everything we saw was definitely three. So three is what we return. And you can see that's the correct return value here. So straightforward problem. We can just iterate in O of n time, iterating over the string. Don't need a stack. Don't need any data structure. This is constant space. Let's code it up. So first, I'm just going to initialize a couple of variables. One is going to be the result. That's going to be what we end up returning. That's going to store the max depth. Now we're going to have another variable. We could call it cur or count or whatever. It's going to be the current depth of where we're at in the input string. So the way I'm going to iterate over the string is actually very simple, just for every character in the string. We don't need to worry about the index of any of those characters. We only care about two specific cases. Is it the open parenthesis or 
is it the closing parentheses, so like this. And you can probably guess what I'm gonna put in each of these. If it's open, we increment the count by one. If it's closing, we decrement the count by one. Now, regardless of what we ended up with, we wanna know among every position in the string, which one led us to the maximum and what was that maximum. We don't really care about the position, but what the maximum depth was. So down here, we can always update the result like this, always taking the max of itself with with whatever the current depth happens to be. And so this is the whole code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. As you can see, it does, and it is pretty efficient. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.